Hello everyone, Stanley here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition video. Today we're going to be talking about 10 simple things that every Minecraft starter base needs. You're probably familiar with starter bases by now. Whenever you create or join a new Minecraft world, the first thing that you need to do is make some sort of simple habitat so that you can not only survive the night, but survive the onslaught of deadly mobs. Oftentimes a starter base will look like a dirt box or potentially just a hole in the ground, maybe even a cave if you're being fancy. However, the there's a lot of things that you can do to make your starter bases much nicer, much more survival friendly, and a lot of additional things that you can add to them to make your enjoyment of Minecraft significantly better. The 10 simple things on this list will not only help you survive in your Minecraft world, but thrive on all of your various adventures. And the things on this list are intended for about the first week or so of your Minecraft world. A couple of these things might seem a little bit advanced for day one, but trust me, you'll get there eventually and you will want all of this stuff in your base eventually. <laughs> Before we even get into what you want in your base, the first thing is location, location, location. Chances are you're going to be spending a lot of time in your starter base and around the area just getting all the early game resources so that you can eventually build up your main base. You want to choose somewhere that ideally has some sort of structure like, you know, maybe a village, maybe not this village because it's kind of cut in half that's beside the point you also want to pick somewhere that has easy access to a lot of trees that way you can get tons and tons of wood also of course you want to make sure that you just have like nice scenery having some good scenery is going to greatly improve your mood and going to greatly improve your enthusiasm to play let's put it that way also, I would suggest just looking for a nice little cave. If you got a time pressure, finding yourself a cave and then sectioning that off and turning it into a base is probably going to be the easiest thing to do instead of trying to gather up all the wood that you need to build like a house or something. Or you can build yourself a dirt box, but generally going underground is one of the easiest and quickest things to do early game. Another bonus of setting up shop in a cave is that when it's nighttime and super scary outside, you have automatic access to a bunch of easy ores and you can go caving during the night and then once it's safe and daytime again then you can go back out and do all the things that you need to on the surface so first up is the essentials of course you will want yourself a furnace and probably a whole bunch of crafting tables these two things go together absolutely everywhere so it makes sense that you would have them in your starter base and seriously you're gonna want multiple crafting tables that way you can craft items pretty much anywhere also you'll want a bed or a respawn anchor that way you can actually you know respawn in your base a base isn't that useful if you can't respawn in it and then i would also suggest just having some backup gear this is an optional thing but after dying especially on a new world it's good to have some like stone tools and you know food and torches just ready to go that way you can go off adventuring and retrieve all of your other items if you got some resources then of course having an ender chest is also a very helpful thing as well Furthermore, you will want to light up your entire base thoroughly, that way no hostile mobs spawn in it or around it, and I would also recommend that you light up around every entrance as well, that way it just prevents mobs from wanting to wander towards your entrances or spawn and like literally right outside your doors. Just light up everything. You seriously cannot torch spam enough in this game. Put torches everywhere. You won't regret it. And the final essential thing is to make sure that you are fully encased in your base. If you're forgetting a wall somewhere, if you got a hole in the ceiling, or if you got a cave in your floor or something, a mob will find you and it will blow you up and it will ruin your day. So make sure that you're fully encased. If you're in a cave, that means that you might have to have several entrances and make sure you explore all the little cave branches as well because some of these things will go to the surface and that is an easy route for mobs and creepers to come attack you when you least expect it next up we got storage storage is absolutely crucial please take my warning on this you want to get as organized as you can as early as you can if you got a whole bunch of random chests laying around full of tons of random items you're going to be spending a lot of time going through those chests trying to find the one thing that you need however if you get organized right off the bat then you can just be on your way because because you know where all of your stuff is so you can of course use item frames with an item in it to describe what you got in the chest you can use signs with words on them to describe what you got in the chest or you can just leave the chest empty and remember that this chest right here is the one that has the one random seed in it that you'll want to use later i would suggest laying out items pretty evenly as well like actually organize contents of the chest 
along with like an identifier of what the chest is. Seriously, storage is so important in this game and it's getting more important every single update because more and more items are being added and inventories are getting more and more cluttered. So if you're organized, it's gonna save you so much time and make it way easier to do all the things that you want to. <laughs> Also, the storage system is basically where you're going to be spending your most amount of time when you're in your base. This goes for really any base. The storage is where you're going to be at all the time. So make sure you got your essentials really close by, like your crafting tables and your furnaces. That way, everything is just in one area and easily accessible. I quickly interrupt this video to say if you are enjoying this video and maybe learning a new thing or two and maybe this is helping you out in your worlds, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have a ton of Bedrock Edition tutorials and just a ton of Bedrock Edition and Minecraft related content on the channel that I think you would probably enjoy. So if you're liking this one, consider subscribing. Help us reach 300,000 subscribers. And that is it. That is my public service announcement. Let's get back to the video. The next thing that you definitely want is some form of automatic food source. I would recommend a chicken cooker. It is extremely easy to set up early game. It doesn't really take any redstone resources and it gives you a really decent source of food. As you can see, that is a lot of chicken. That is enough for any player for a pretty long amount of time. Of course, you don't need to set up a chicken cooker. You could set up like a cow farm or a pig farm or a sheep farm or just some crop farms or pretty much whatever you want. But I would highly suggest to make a fully automatic food source. That way you never have to worry about food. You always got something to eat and you're never going to starve in your Minecraft world. Starving is a terrible thing and you don't want to do that. This one could be kind of optional. However, I recommend a miniature furnace array. This thing will allow you to smelt down a ton of items just while you're off doing other things. You don't need to manually mess with a furnace or anything. So this is a very simple thing to set up. You have a furnace or technically a smoker or a blast furnace in the middle, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on what you're, what you're smelting down. Then you got a hopper underneath that going into a chest. You got a hopper into the side of it to feed it fuel. As you can see, if we put some fuel in there, that's going to go right into the fuel slot. And then you got a hopper above it and a chest above it for all of your smeltable goods. So if you have like a cow farm or a sheep farm or whatever, and you get a bunch of raw meats from it, and then you can dump all that into this kind of system and then feed it some fuel. And then that'll automatically smelt down all of your food for you. And then you just automatically have a good source of smelting. Or you can throw like your cobblestone in there and smelt it down into smooth stone or your ores or whatever you want. Of course, one thing you can't do without in your Minecraft world is some mines. You got to go mining to get all the resources that you need for everything. And because we're in a cave system, I happened to find a cave that went like all the way down to Y level 11. I would recommend putting a mines right in your starter base because then you have the chance of finding like a slime chunk or some mob spawners and all these very useful things that you might need right next to your base. So as you can see, this goes right down to Y level 11. We can go do some quick mining. And of course, there's all the ores that you ever need, including diamonds, which you'll need a ton of in your world for armor, weapons, tools, enchanting. Basically, go mining and get all of the resources. Once you got resources, you can do whatever you want in this game. Another thing that you'll definitely want in your starter base is a nether portal. A nether portal is a pretty easy thing to get your hands on nowadays. All you need is 10 pieces of obsidian and you can even make obsidian if you have a lava buckets and water. So pretty easy thing to get your hands on. And of course, you want to go to the nether for all of the lovely nether update features and also just all of the other good resources that are there, all the potential for mob farms, and of course the potential for traveling very quickly to far off places in the overworld. Overall, the nether is pretty awesome. I might be a little bit biased there, but the nether is great and you'll definitely want another portal eventually. And now it's time for better tools and there's a multitude of ways to do that. Probably the easiest and simplest way is to set up yourself an enchantment table. Make sure you got plenty of bookshelves that way you can have the high level enchantments. And of course, this just uses lapis and experience to enchant your tools with very, very useful things. So if we go ahead and put in like our pickaxe, for example, you'll see that that's a level 30 enchantment. We got to put in some lapis and now we can get silk touch on this thing or efficiency too. 
And we actually got efficiency four. Look at that, not too shabby. So you definitely wanna go ahead and enchant your tools, your weapons, your armor, your fishing rod, enchant all of the things, and then you'll have far better time. Once you have good tools and good armor and good weapons, you can do so many different things in this game. You won't be dying as much. You can do things a lot quicker and you can adventure and take more risks. Two things you'll also want is an anvil and a grindstone. A grindstone allows you to unenchant something and get the experience back from it, which is incredibly useful when enchanting because this thing can give you some pretty bad enchantments sometimes. And then the anvil allows you to rename your things, whatever you want, and also allows you to combine tools together. Together. As you can see, this one's got Silk Touch Unbreaking, this one's got Silk Touch Efficiency, and now it's got Silk Touch Unbreaking and Efficiency. So, you can do whatever you want. These two things will be very helpful when combined with an enchantment table. On the same note of getting a better gear, an AFK Fish Farm is still a very valid thing to build on the Bedrock Edition. This will give you a ton of different food, resources, enchantment books, and all kinds of various junk. That is pretty useful in the early game. AFK fish farms may not be for every player, but if you feel like using one, you definitely can. It can really give you a good leg up in the early game. Not to mention, it also gives you a ton of experience as well. One of the final things that you'll want to do to your starter base is decorate it. Nobody wants to live in an ugly hole in the ground. If you're living in an ugly hole in the ground, chances are your quality of life are not that high. So go ahead and decorate it. Put some blocks on the walls, put some blocks on the ceilings, on the floor. All of the surfaces should have the blocks. Now go for something that's, you know, maybe kind of easy. You don't need to make it the most beautiful thing in the world. It doesn't need to be using these super complicated resources. Just building it out of like woods or stones and going for a simple theme will go a long way. If you're planning on playing in this world for a long time, you're going to want to come back to your starter base every now and again, just for the nostalgia and the memories. And if you make it look even mildly nice, it's just going to be a good experience to revisit in the future. Also, living in a pretty bad is way nicer than living in a dirt one. Trust me. By the way, you can skip the decoration step if you have shaders on. Literally everything looks good with shaders. So pop on some shaders and you can skip decoration entirely. <laughs> and the final thing I would recommend for a starter base is a personal touch. Make it your own. Add some little details and some decorations here and there. This is different from just like some standard decorations. Anybody can build, but giving it that personal touch, that little bit of you is very important. So, for example, if you put some like item frames on the walls with little mementos from different events throughout your Minecraft world, it'll be really fun. You can put down some armor stands with different armor, get yourself some pets, some mob heads on the walls, get yourself some banners or signs, maybe some renamed mobs, whatever you like. There's so many different ways to uh, customize and add some personal touches to your starter base. A starter base is a very important part of a new world and it really can help you get started and just go off and have some amazing adventures. And those are 10 simple things that I think every single starter base in Minecraft needs. If you have anything else that you think a starter base needs, then please let us know in the comment section down below. I'm sure I missed something and I'm sure there's some other great suggestions that you guys got, so put them in the comment sections. If you're a new player, hopefully this video helped you out, and if you're an old player, then Hopefully you just enjoyed the video. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I do greatly appreciate it. If you are enjoying this video, then make sure to leave a like. It significantly helps out the video and the channel a ton. If you're new here, then make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos like this one on the channel. And otherwise, I'll see you all down in the comment sections and in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And then there was silence.